main character is not named Becca, that is the author's name, Jan. Wow. By W. Gregorio or Gregorio? Gregorio? Gregorio. Hey guys, it's Jay, and I am here with part one of my February wrap up. It's only February 13th right now, but I've already read 10 books. So I feel like I should split up these wrap ups so it's not like 20 books because I've discovered the beautiful thing called the audiobook and I literally listen to like a book every two days. Without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> the first book that I ended up reading is Dangerous Lies by Becca Fitzpatrick. I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. In character, Stella really bothered me. I despised her. She did get better in the second half of the book. But basically it's about this girl named Stella Gordon, it's not really her real name. She was just put into a witness protection program for her own safety because she witnessed her mom's drug dealer kill somebody and therefore she needs to testify against this man. And it's basically her story and how she doesn't want to be in the witness protection program because her life is so unfair, blah blah blah. She just, I didn't like her. She just drove me insane, and therefore, I wasn't able to give the book more than three stars. I did really love the love interest, though. His name was Chet Falconer. And I, he was so dreamy. I enjoyed him very, very much. Ho, ho, ho. Loved him. The second book that I read in February is The Girl in 6E by A.R. Tor. I loved this book. I gave it a 4.5 stars out of 5. On Goodreads. I have a review up of it so y'all can check that out if you're interested. It's an erotic thriller so if you're not into the whole sexy sexy time probably don't pick it up. Because it's it's a lot about the sexy sexy time. The third book that I read this month was Teased by Amanda Maciel. I gave it a two out of five stars on Goodreads. I really did not like it. I had my problems with it. I also have a review of it if you want to check that one out. I did not like it because slut shaming and a bunch of other issues. Check out my review if you're interested on my thoughts, but I didn't like it. The fourth book that I ended up reading this month is None of the Above by I.W. Gregorio. It is about an 18 year old named Kristen who just got diagnosed with AIS, which means that she is intersex. When her entire school kind of finds out about this diagnosis, they push her away and treat her very differently. She ends up losing her boyfriend, her friends, her scholarship for the track team, and it's just such an amazing story. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. You can tell that the author really cared about the topic, and I think that she did an excellent job in explaining what intersex is and the things that come along with it. I became increasingly more angry as I read this book because the fact that somebody can be treated so differently just because of the way they're born really bothers me. Because I don't, I don't see what the big deal is. They're still a human being and therefore they should be treated as a human being. I thought that the author did an amazing job in showing that people can be extremely cruel but with the right support system, you can totally overcome anything that gets in your way. And I just really love the book. I think everybody should read it because it's a super important topic. The fifth book that I read this month is All the Truth That's In Me by Julie Berry. It's about this girl named Judith Finch who goes missing for four years with her friend Lottie. She ends up returning without Lottie and without half of her tongue. When her mom discovers that she is not able to talk very well, she forbids her from ever doing so again. To make matters worse, her dad ended up dying from the grief of her going missing and now her virtue is it being questioned. Who she grew up with now ignores her and wants nothing to do with her except for her longtime crush named Lucas. When tension begins to rise in the town that she lives, the truth about what happened to her needs to come out. I didn't really like this book. I gave it a 2.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. I found the plot to be a little bit boring at times and if you weren't really invested in the story, you would miss key aspects that kind of helped you solve the mystery. It was kind of predictable how it ended. I did like how the story was told in second perspective. It was kind of interesting. It was in the format of a letter 
to Lucas, which was very different from what you usually see, but just something about it didn't sit right with me. I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. The sixth book that I ended up reading this month was Schizo by Nick Schiff. I gave the book a 2.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. It's about a 16 year old boy named Miles Coles who has schizophrenia. On the same day as his first schizophrenic episode, his younger brother Teddy goes missing on the beach and he decides that it is his life's duty to find his little brother. I usually love mental health books so when I saw this book I was super excited and I instantly knew I needed to read it. Unfortunately I was a little bit disappointed in it. I thought that it was a little bit slow and it wasn't really anything that I couldn't call in the plot. It was pretty predictable. I also didn't really like the amount of swearing that was in this book. It seemed that every other word was the f-bomb and it just seemed like there was no need for it. I didn't understand why it was thrown in there so many times. I don't really like swearing in books but that's just my preferences. I did really like reading from Miles' perspective though. It was really interesting to see how someone with schizophrenia thought. The seventh book that I read this month was Crash by Lisa McMahon and I was so excited to read this book because I read Dead to You by Lisa McMahon and I absolutely loved it. But it was very different. I gave it a three out of five stars on Goodreads. This book is about Jules DeMarco who sees the exact same vision in every reflective surface that she looks at. It's a vision that includes a snowplow, the restaurant of the rival family of her restaurant, and nine body bags. Jules discovers that one of the nine body bags belongs to Sawyer Agnotti, who is the son of the rival restaurant that her family owned. Jules has had a long time crush on Sawyer since they were kids, so she decides that she is going to stop this crash from occurring. I thought the story was going to be a lot more action-packed and thrilling than it was. I found it a little bit slow and Jules was really creepy. She was like super stalkerish towards Sawyer and obsessed about everything that he did to the fact that Sawyer should have been creeped out. Like she would go to his restaurant and like hide behind vans and stuff. It was just, it was creepy. The romance was predictable. The story was predictable. Lisa McMahon is the queen of cliffhangers. I don't want to read the second book because I didn't really like the first book, but I want to read the second book because of the cliffhanger. Why do you do this to me, Lisa McMahon? Why? <laughs> Eighth book that I read this month was Lies Beneath by Anne Greenwood Brown. I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It's about a merman named Calder White. His three sisters send him on a mission to seduce the daughter of Jason Hancock. Jason Hancock is the son of Tom Hancock who ultimately led their mother to her death. Calder begins to fall for the daughter Lily and he must decide whether he is going to betray his family to be with Lily or to betray Lily and kill her father. I found Calder to be super creepy at the beginning. He kind of like stalked Lily a little bit and I really liked how Lily was like, bro, like back up, you're creepy, you make me uncomfortable. Because I find that in a lot of YA books, stalkerish tendencies seem to be romanticized. It's like, oh my god, he loves me. Like, no, he's being a stalker. Like, what? This is not romantic. This is creepy. So I really liked how Lily actually stood up for herself. I didn't like how fast the romance developed because it was like one second Lily was like, oh, oh my god, like, bro, you're super creepy. And then the next second she's like, oh my god, love me, you merman. Oh, so sexy. Like, no, be creeped out. I thought it was super cool that the mer people could transform back into humans just by stepping out of the water. I thought it was really cool how they couldn't spend more than 24 hours outside of the water or their skin would begin to like crack and like they would shrivel up. I was super surprised by the ending. I did not see it coming at all. It was a really good plot twist and it kind of makes me want to pick up the second book. It's in Lily's perspective. The ninth book that I read this month is Dark Eden by Patrick Carmen. It is about a boy named Will Besting and six other teenagers who have debilitating crippling phobias and they get sent to this camp called Dark Eden and it's supposed to be able to cure them from this fear. When Will and the other teenagers arrive at this camp, Will escapes and hides out in a bunker and is able to watch the other teenagers being cured from their phobias on these monitors down in the bunker. 
super weird, I know. The problem is, once the teenagers are cured, they're experiencing these pains and aches that are unexplainable, and it's basically Will trying to figure out what is really going on in Dark Eden. I wouldn't call it a psychological thriller, which is what it's classified as. I didn't really find it thrilling until the last, like, 100 pages when everything started to unfold. The way that the big reveals were done at the very end of the book in, like, observations was kind of annoying because it was, like, the exact same storyline the entire way through and then just, like, bam, look at me being so clever. I didn't think there was any character development and the plot was kind of boring. There are pictures in the book that kind of are annoying because they spoiled what the teenager was scared of. Like, I'm gonna spoil one for you, but I'll cover the name. But see, there's like pictures in it, and it's the beginning of the chapter, so it tells you what they're scared of, so it's kind of annoying because you want to know what they're scared of, but you don't want to be spoiled before you even get to the part where they're cured, you know what I mean? So there's like random footnotes in here, like the history of the recorder. like. I didn't understand why they were in there. They didn't do anything for the story. It was just like the author needed to make it longer. I ended up giving this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. And finally, the 10th book that I read was Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It's about a girl named Libby Day who was 7 when her mother and two sisters were brutally massacred in 1985. Her brother, Ben, ended up being convicted of the murders thanks to her testimony that she made. Ben was regarded as a loner and Satan worshipper, so it was easy for the town to decide that he was obviously guilty. Libby is now 31 years old and she's been living off of generous donations from her community for the past 25 years, but sadly her money is starting to run out. So she decides that she will make an appearance as a special guest for this kill club who are a group of enthusiasts who are trying to clear Ben's name. At first Libby is only in it for the money and then she starts to discover things about the murder and that night that she didn't know about originally and she becomes more invested in finding out what really happened. The book is told from three different perspectives which was really interesting. It's told from Libby in the present day. Ben in 1985 and their mother Patty in 1985 and it was just really well written the way that Gillian Flynn tied everything together. I preferred reading from Ben's perspective. I thought he was a really interesting character and he was definitely my favorite out of the three perspectives. I think that Gillian Flynn does an amazing job writing characters that you hate but love at the exact same time. I could not get enough of any of the characters. I loved to hate them. The story is definitely a constant emotional roller coaster. I thought I had it figured out and then I didn't have it figured out and it was just so much fun to read and I found the book extremely hard to put down and when I did put it down, I just wanted to pick it right back up again because I needed to know what happened. Alright guys, so that was the 10 books that I read in February, my part one of this wrap-up. Stay tuned for part two probably going up tomorrow. I will see you in my next video. Goodbye! What did I say about this book? What did I say about this book? All the lies within me, I think. All the truth that's in me. Oh, this girl named Judas. Judas. Yep, Judas. Where are you footnotes? Why can't I find you? Where have you gone away? My world is changed.